So recently I've been eating up information on the original King Kong like crazy in preparation for getting my Road to Gojira video on the topic all finished up. As I'm researching, I found out that the film had a novelization that, get this, predates the movie's release. Wow. I honestly knew that way beforehand and I'm pretty sure most, if not all of you knew that as well. But something maybe not everyone knows of is that the novelization got republished about a dozen times over in the last few decades. I know the original film got multiple theatrical runs in its lifetime, but it's got nothing on the amount of times this book got released. Naturally fresh cover art followed each new publication, and that's precisely what we're going to examine in this video as we go over the numerous cover illustrations of the Delos Lovelace novel, pointing out both the outstanding and just plain terrible covers. Of course, art is subjective, so it's okay if you disagree with my assessment on these. Let's all just relax, have fun, and look at some crazy art. Of course, every topic has a humble beginning, and the history of this one starts at the same time the movie was in development. King Kong's original writer was a well-known author named Edgar Wallace, who produced more than a hundred novels, mostly crime dramas. Since Wallace was a big name in the literary department, Marion Cooper, the film's producer and director, came up with the concept for Wallace to write a tie-in novel in addition to the script to help advertise the picture. Unfortunately, Wallace fell sick while working on revisions for the screenplay and passed away before the film was finished. While other writers were brought in to wrap up the tale for the film, Cooper resorted to a man by the name of Delos Lovelace for assistance in producing the novel, and Lovelace did just that, with the book being published by Grosset and Dunlip in 1932. And this particular book is where our journey begins, and we're off to a pretty good start. I like this portrayal of Kong. I also like the way the background scenery of Skull Mountain Island in New York City blend together back here. The darker shade of Kong's fur helps make him stand out amongst the piece's prominent yellow tones. And that goes the same for the back cover, which is also wonderfully illustrated. The artist responsible for this work, Glenn Kravitz, was a prolific producer of stunning movie posters during his era, even contributing significantly to the original King Kong by not only designing the novel's cover art, but also assisting in the production of a comic strip for the picture and working on one of the film's posters. The art may be a bit cartoonish, but it's a fantasy adventure. It can get away with being a bit abstract. So while this book is literally in every library today, there was a time when it was difficult to come by. It was out of print for a while, over 30 years to be exact, until in 1965 when the company Bantam Books re-released it with a cover that had both Kong and Anne during the ritual scene. And both look really spot on to how they look in the film. Well, Kong looks different all over in that movie, but I can identify this as the original King Kong. Also, this is a pretty bold statement about the all-time King of the Monsters. I wonder if that's a call out to a certain other King of the Monsters. The next year saw the Corgi Books publication, which depicted the big ape on top of the Empire State Building on a dark, misty night. It's fine, I guess? In 1970, there was a German release put out by this publisher. The cover encompasses a piece of art that shows Kong looking quite cool about having a huge dead serpent all over his body. Kong also has an odd stance here, as if he's wearing a serpentine scarf and posing for a fashion magazine. I can't be the only one who sees that here. Okay, so things are about to get a little chaotic. So sometime in the 1970s, the novelization of King Kong fell into the public domain, meaning any publisher can just take it to the market and sell it to make a quick buck. And that is precisely what many publishers did. And hey, right on time for a new King Kong film to come out. And yes, you can very well bet that many publishers took advantage to soak up the excitement surrounding the new movie, like Ace Books here for example. Okay, so while we are going to get into some iffy illustrations, this one, with artwork put out by Frank Frazetta, is pretty damn good. The view of Kong pursuing an attractive looking woman in this eerie looking jungle environment gives the image a horror-like atmosphere, with Kong looking menacing here. It's fantastic. This is among one of the better covers in this collection. Another striking work of art for Zeta made was the cover image for the 1976 film novelization, which depicts Kong fighting the enormous serpent in a cave. Again, really good stuff. It's certainly light years better than the 2005 film's novelization cover. Ugh, boring. Around the same time, the novel's original publisher decided to republish the book with freshly created cover art. 
showcasing Kong being fired at by police while he climbs up a building. Which is an intriguing choice for the cover, given that this particular sequence was cut from the original film, but left in the book. This one's artwork is weird. Kong has like a derp face here, and he's holding Anne like she's an ice cream scoop. And he's climbing a building no less, while being fired at. It's gonna be Beast that kills the beauty in this scenario. The publisher Albain Michael would also use this cover's artwork that same year for the French release. Regarding French publications, here's yet another strange one with a derpy looking Kong holding Miss Darrow here in his clenched hand, which is just weird looking. He might be holding her by one leg, but who holds someone like that? And could Kong's big fat head take up any more space here? Tempo Books got their hands in the ring with their very artsy looking cover. For a while, I didn't care much for this one, but it's kind of grown on me. You got dozens of creepy looking people down here, with the monstrous looking Kong above them, and I like the little shot of New York under Kong here, particularly the Empire State Building standing out the most. That along with the hellish tones that I'm getting from this piece is kind of symbolic to the story's ending. For some reason the Spanish version revamped everything here. The city looks more lit up, Kong looks more freaky now, Anne's now a discount Barbie doll. And did they just replace the biplanes with jet planes? Were jet planes even around during the events of King Kong? Even if they were, they're not in this particular story, I can tell you that much. The German cover of this one's like, eh, we don't need planes for our cover. Apparently they don't need dark tones for it either. Here we have the illustrated King Kong cover which is basically the novel, but with the benefit of having illustrations sprinkled throughout it. This one goes with a monochromatic color scheme, with it only using red as the hue. Richard Powers' artwork for this book is a touch too sketchy for my taste, so I can't say I'm a huge fan of it. However, I must admit that I think his work for the cover is excellent. It's extensive, meticulous work overall. Later on, this book was reissued under the new title, King Kong, A Picture Book with an alternate cover that showed Kong facing off against the Meat Eater. A Russian release of the book also seems to have used the illustrated cover art, except the Big Kong appears to have been redrawn. So yeah, there are a lot of King Kong novels that re-released the same story the same year, all because of the Dino De Laurentiis remake. Funny to note on that is that there were some books that got released using promotional images from that movie for their covers. Why? Let's take a trip around the world, starting in Finland where Kong seems to have been trapped in a white void with floating windows. The Bulgarian version features a Sasquatch looking Kong with a very interesting choice of lip design. And is this supposed to be Andaro? Or did Bigfoot here just grab any woman off the street? Maybe it's supposed to be that one woman he mistook for Anne. The UK got this one put out by Arthur Barker in 1977, and it's pretty good. Kong looks great, the planes are nicely detailed, it's just a simply good cover. In 1976, Japan received multiple printings of the book, starting with this illustration that resembles the cover to a horror film. Well, at least I think it does. And I think it's because Kong reminds me of Dracula here. Anyone else kind of see that? Around the same time, the publisher Kiso Tengaisha released this cover. Even though the image only occupies nearly half the cover, it's still pretty stunning and vibrant. Though I guess King Kong forgot to trim his toenails that day. Katakawa issued the third Japanese edition, which had a cover bursting with reddish tones to help King Kong's prominence on the composition. Upon just glancing at it, you'd probably think this came out around the 1930s or somewhere around that time. Though you'd be surprised to know that this release came out in 2005, obviously to build off the hype of the new King Kong remake at the time. Similar to the 1976 adaptation that came before, the 2005 film encouraged book publishers to scurry to get the classic novel back onto bookstore shelves. Again. Starting us off, we've got the Modern Library release, featuring our titled monster hanging from a building holding Anne, with the two looking very similar in appearance to their latest incarnations at the time. It's a fine cover, I guess. A small detail that I love that is often ignored on these covers is the shackle around Kong's wrist, which came from the chains he broke off on stage. It's cool that it's included here, except the artist drew it on the wrong wrist. Though this is the novelization, so I guess it could be on the right wrist instead of the left? Or how about on both? Ugh, this one. I don't personally care much for this one, 
simply because Kong looks like a guy in an ape suit here. Now before I receive fire for that comment, I just want to clarify that I don't hate Kong being betrayed by a guy in an ape suit. I love all the movies that have him as such. But I don't want to think of that when I'm reading or watching the original King Kong. I want to think more of the stop motion looking beast, or something similar to that. A small gripe on my part, otherwise it's just okay. But let's move over the mediocre ones and look at one that's pretty damn good. Like this one put out by Underwood Books. I absolutely love Kong's appearance on this one, as well as the overall artistic approach. I get this nostalgic feeling from the combination of the brown and yellow colors here, giving me this old timely look as if I'm about to read something from the past. This is an excellent cover overall, easily in my top 5. The only thing that ruins it is this stupid remark here. The classic story, soon to be a major motion picture, again! Well gee, thank you for reminding me that this is a very dated book. Another one that dates itself pretty bad is that of the Orion publishing release, with text on the bottom giving information on the brand new Peter Jackson movie, starring Adrian Brody and Naomi Watts. Thank you for telling me that book. I'm sure that information will come in handy when I'm reading this particular story. Also the cover for this one is just blah to me. With an angry red eyed gorilla on the cover in front of a modern day city. Because if that doesn't scream 1930s King Kong to me, then I don't know what does. Now a complaint I have in general with marketing King Kong is that a lot of people see the 8th wonder as, oh giant gorilla who sometimes has a woman in his hand? They have that mentality in mind and just slap a gorilla on the cover of a King Kong product because King Kong is a gorilla. King Kong is more than simply a large gorilla. He possesses monstrous qualities that make him, well, a monster. Let's go back to the Underwood cover real fast, which depicts King Kong as this monstrous figure, and not just some simple giant animal. When I look at this cover, I see King Kong. When I look at this cover, I see a gorilla who got his toes stepped on. 2017 would mark the next big Kong movie release, with Kong Skull Island, which like some other Kong flicks before it, got its own novelization, with a cover that just simply uses the movie's teaser poster. Actually, that's what all the MonsterVerse novelizations do. Even though they weren't made specifically for the books, they are still some very outstanding imagery. I'll still say it's better than what the 2005 film's book did. In any case, not many publishers decided to reprint the 1932 original work this time around. It might be for the fact that the movie's title wasn't just King Kong, or it might be the reality that these books are now practically everywhere. Nevertheless, Perfect Commando Productions went ahead and released what may be the very worst of the lot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, feast your eyes on this bad boy. I know I couldn't believe it either, but this is a legit cover that you could purchase and add to your bookshelves. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's like some guy just discovered Photoshop and thought, oh, I can make a living off this. And boy, I wouldn't be surprised in the least if this was their first time ever using a paint program. You could see the little areas the marching ants missed, the crude artwork like Ant's finger here, or Kong holding the vine all janky looking. I mean, it, what, what's this? What is any of this? While there's nothing to really say on the back covers of most of these, this one is worth checking out. Because never you mind the misshapen anatomy, King Kong has got claws. The illustrator drew King Kong with claws. I mean, is this real? Did AI design this? Well, well, no, there's an illustrator credited on the front cover. As if they're so proud of this work that they put their names on the front cover. And you know what? They deserve it. Anyone who designs a masterpiece like this should always be credited. Thank you, Mr. Blanchard. Thank you so much for contributing to society for this one. And on that very unique piece, I'm gonna wrap things up here. I know I missed a few covers, but we can save those for another time. On that note, I thank you all for watching to the end, and I'll see you all next time. What unexpected problem should arise? Transamerica Property, Casualty, and Life Insurance can be there to protect you. Hey, you big ape! Who's gonna pay for this mess? Transamerica. For insurance and financial services. The power of the pyramid is working for you.